As some of you may know, I spent four years of my life here in Chicago. It had been nine years since the Brown versus Board of Education Supreme Court decision that desegregated schools in America. But the school officials here in Chicago at that time had still refused to meaningfully desegregate the city's public schools. Black schools were overcrowded and underfunded, with many students forced to share chairs and desks. Meanwhile, a report at that time found over 380 white classrooms were completely empty. But instead of putting black children in those empty classrooms, the school officials decided to put old trailers. You know what old trailers look like? Put old trailers on the black school grounds. And those trailers were called Willis Wagons after the Chicago school superintendent of that time, Mr. Benjamin Willis. Those trailers were a monstrosity. Students would boil in the heat and freeze in the cold. They were infested with rats. They were an insult and a disgrace. And the community fought back. One day, many of us went to the spot where they were planning to put the trailers. We were corralled by the police and told not to cross a line. Well, some of us did cross that line. And, of course, we were arrested. And we spent that night in jail until we were bailed out in the morning by the NAACP. As a student at the University of Chicago in the early 60s, I became involved with a civil rights organization called the Congress on Racial Equality Corps, which was one of the leading civil rights groups of that period. But in the early 1960s, the University of Chicago owned segregated housing. Being audacious young people, black and white, our chapter of CORE wanted to expose the racist housing system run by the university. And so our CORE chapter did something pretty interesting. We sent white couples and black couples into the university-owned housing to pretend that they were looking for an apartment. And you can guess what happened. When the black couples showed up, just, there were just no apartments available. But a few hours later, when one of our white couples went in to look for an apartment, somehow, mysteriously, they found a choice of apartments. After documenting that clear pattern of racial discrimination, the students in CORE demanded that the university desegregate its housing. When they refused, we staged one of the first ever civil rights sit-ins in the North. The reason I tell you all of this is because my activities here in Chicago taught me a very important lesson that I have never forgotten. And that is that whether it is the struggle against corporate greed against racism, sexism, homophobia, environmental devastation, or war and militarism. Real change never takes place from the top on down. It always takes place from the bottom on up. Have we made progress in civil rights in this country since the early 1960s when I lived here in Chicago? And the answer is yes, we have. But do we still have a very, very long way to go to end the institutional racism which permeates almost every aspect of our society? And the answer is absolutely.